So let me start right off by telling you a little bit about a guy named Kenny Ortega. Kenny Ortega is a director and choreographer who's worked on like Newsies, St. Elmo's Fire, Dirty Dancing, High School Musical 1, 2, and 3, Descendants 1, 2, and 3. I mean, he's just worked on like everything at this point. Well, somewhat recently, our man Kenny over here came out with a brand new show on Netflix called Julie and the Phantoms. And I'll tell you right now, if there's one thing I'm a sucker for, it's musical teen rom-coms. Because I'm a 32-year-old man who is very well adjusted, thank you for asking. So, let's check out Julie and the Phantoms. But before that, really quick, this video is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. If you haven't heard of Raid Shadow Legends by now, then you probably don't watch as much YouTube as I do. But still, Raid Shadow Legends is a free-to-play game that you can play on your mobile device or your desktop. You can play anytime, anywhere. You have 10 challenging dungeons to play through, and every dungeon has a boss at the end that requires a very specific strategy to beat. The campaign has a fully voiced story spanning 12 unique locations and three difficulties you can play on. There are 13 unique factions you can play as. You got dwarves, orcs, undead, knights, teletubbies, care bears, whatever. And in these factions, there's over 460 champions, each with their own design, skill, skills, strength, weaknesses, you can build your team how you want. There's over 200,000 active clans right now, so you can join and find friends really easily. And of course, with over 25 million players worldwide, there's endless fun to be had doing PvP arenas or just finding friends to hang out and talk about the game with. And when you put all these things together, you get a game that has basically endless content and infinite ways to play. Raid just released the Artifact Forge, where you can save time to craft artifacts directly, as well as a whole new advanced quest system with rewards and stuff like that. And on top of all this, they also brought out some cool new champions, and they're developing this thing called the Doom Tower. So click the links in the description below and if you're a new player you're gonna get 100,000 silver, 50 gems, one energy refill, and one free rare champion, the Executioner. And you'll find all these rewards in your inbox right up here. So if you're interested, go check out Raid Shadow Legends. Okay back to the show. We start off in the far away ancient year of 1995, back when I was a seven year old boy watching Mark Somers and his perfectly permed mullet encouraging other seven year old kids to just kinda... Yeah, it was a weird time. But all the same, right off the bat, we meet three of our main characters as they finish doing a sound check for their big performance later that night. Woo! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Thank you, we're Sunset Curve. Too bad we wasted that on the sound check. That was the tightest we ever played. Oh, wait until tonight, man, when this place gets packed with record execs. Alex, you are smoking. Oh, no, I was just warming up. You guys were the ones on fire. Nah, bro, you're the one up there being all handsome and stuff. Psh, man, come on, you know we're nothing without that cute little buddy of yours. I tell you what, sometimes I just want to take out a strong blow on it, just like... <gasps> Anyway, after whatever that all was, they head outside to go get some street hot dogs from the back of some dude's car. But before that, they take a moment to chat up the local cute waitress, Rose. You guys are really good. Thank you. I see a lot of bands. Been in a couple myself. I was really feeling it. I'm Luke, by the way. Hi, I'm Reggie. Alex. Bobby. Nice meeting you guys. I'm Rose. Oh, uh, here's our demo. And a t-shirt size, beautiful. <laughs> Anyway, like I said, they go out into the street to eat whatever these are supposed to be. And can I just say, like, I get that they're supposed to look like teenagers from the 90s or whatever, and I don't know exactly how accurate it is, but these guys all just look like any of those self-proclaimed hot guys on TikTok. You know, the ones who just can't stop licking and biting their lips for some reason. Do you or someone you know suffer from TikTok face? TikTok face is a life-threatening condition that makes you look like an idiot. Don't give up. There is help. But anyway, our three young dudes go sit out in some street corner somewhere and start eating their street dogs. That's a new flavor. Chill, man. Street dogs haven't killed us yet. And then they die. No, I'm serious. That's literally actually what happens in the show. We then flash forward to the futuristic year of 2020, and here we meet our actual main main character, Julie, as she tries to survive the ups and downs of the high school experience that doesn't exist anymore. Achiever. Hey, disappointment. <laughs> so, oh man, watching this show is like having a conversation with my dad. Hey, son, so uh, how are them sissy little YouTube videos coming? Oh, you know, still doing them. Yeah, I told all my friends you died from lupus. Okay, I know you don't want me to ask you this, but have you figured out what you're gonna do today? I'll know in the moment. Really, Jules? That's all you're giving me? Miss Harrison said this is your last chance. I know. I was there. So what they're talking about is Julie's upcoming music class assignment where she's supposed to play a piano piece in front of everybody. However, when the time comes for her to do this, things don't really go that well. Take your time. I'm 
sorry. Is this when we clap? I don't know, is this where I'm supposed to punch in the face? So the setup of the show is that Julie used to love music and be this like really talented piano player slash singer, whatever, thanks to her mom. However, some time ago her mom died and now Julie just can't bring herself to play anymore and she might just kind of give up on music altogether. Now with all this bouncing around her head, she goes down to the garage where her mom's old music studio used to be. And can I just say this smiley face shirt and leopard print dinosaur slipper ensemble right here is just giving me life right now. Anyway, like I said, she goes to her mom's old music studio. Okay, turn it off. Turn the show off. I'm not doing this Netflix. Magic CD ghosts? Is that what we're doing right now? So as you might imagine, Julie's just kind of like, huh, that's something. And freaks out running all around the house like me back in high school when I called my crush on the phone. And wouldn't you know, she actually picked up. But eventually she calms down and goes back into the garage to see if maybe she was just imagining things or if three ghosts who look like those guys in every high school whose only pickup line is, yeah, I have you know my parents bought me a pickup truck. If those guys really did or did not just pop out right in front of her for no reason. I know I saw something. I'm not crazy. Well, we're all a little crazy. Anyway, the scene goes on for a bit, and finally, after more yelling and shouting than a David Dobrik video, the show actually starts to go somewhere. Who are you calling? I'm Googling Sunset Swerve. Sunset, sunset curve. curve. Whoa, there is a Sunset Curve. See, you died in 1995 when you were 17. It's now 2020. So, so it has been 25 years? I have been crying? For 25 years? How is that possible? <laughs> oh, you sweet summer child. Oh, t take it from a guy in his 30s, okay? Trust me. It never stops. After this, it's dinner time, so Julie has to go. But right in the middle of it, everyone hears music coming from the studio. So Julie runs back to figure out what's going on and try to understand what's even happening right now. What's that? I must have left the stereo in the garage. I'll go get it. The whole neighborhood could hear you. Okay, I'm sorry. Can we just pause you for a second? What are the rules for these ghosts exactly? Earlier, we see Julie's hand go right through them, but yet they can pick up and play instruments, no problem. How am I supposed to suspend my disbelief and fully immerse myself in this tween rom-com, huh? Anyway, she tells them to stop playing because everyone can hear them, and that's bad for some reason. But as she leaves, the leader of the band, whose name I forgot, goes out to talk to her. I know this is all completely insane, but you do know how rad this is. People, the actual people can hear us play. Yeah, it's just I've had a really, really awful day. I gotta go. I'm sorry you had a bad day, but three guys just found out that they had a bad 25 years. We can play again. That's a gift no musician would ever turn down. Mm. I don't know, man. I think most musicians will be far more excited about lots of other things, like being able to pay rent or eating something besides potato salad every night. Now, the end of the episode comes when, for whatever reason, just kind of randomly one day, Julie becomes inspired to sing and play a song her mom wrote for her, like, way back when, and this leads her to find her love of music once again, and ultimately, she forms a band with the three ghost TikTok guys, and they all go on to have a bunch of zany, wacky Netflix supernatural rom-com adventures. You know, this whole show really just kind of feels like a Disney Channel original movie that got stretched way out into nine episodes. And I gotta say, as weird and bizarre as it is, like, I get it. It's got just enough self-awareness to not be, like, too eye-rollingly cringy. And there are some genuinely funny moments about how these, like, 90s kids would view 2020. You know, if everything that's happened this year never happened. I mean, it's a really weird show. But, eh, it's alright. Hey everybody, first of all, I just want to say thank you for downloading and playing the game. Seems like a lot of you really enjoy it. I'm going to be starting a contest to find the first three people who can finish all 200 levels of the game, okay? If you can do this, if you're one of the first three people to finish all 200 levels, then you're going to get to be in an upcoming video. If possible, you'll get to record a line that will play in the video and or I will draw you as a character who will appear in the video. So if this appeals to you at all, you got to reach the end of the game and be one of the first three people to finish all 200 levels, okay? So, good luck. 
you know, I totally understand why they do this because, like, you know, why, why wouldn't they? But, like, it is so interesting to me to see these kind of shows and movies and stuff coming out. I don't know, because, like, the whole world is going through all this stuff right now, you know, like, horrible negative things going on all over the world. And then there's all these movies and TV shows that just refuse to acknowledge any of it. And, of course, of course they don't. I understand why, because then the show would age very poorly. But just, you know, this entire, like, Julian the Phantom specifically takes place in the year 2020. It says so right at the beginning. And so, like, not only is it just, like, you know, ambiguously modern day, whatever. It's like, no, it's in 2020. And yet, everything that's happening in, in the show is not 2020. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and, like, again, obviously I know why they do that. But it is so interesting to see, like, not only are, like, all these shows being kind of unrealistic or whatever, just in how they portray lots of things, but just the entire world that they're portraying doesn't even exist right now and maybe never will again. I don't know, it's just so weird to watch it and just be like, none of this is applicable to me whatsoever. But still, I mean, Julian the Phantoms, like I said in the video, like, like I get it. It's it's a really cheesy, really, you know, it, like I said, it really does feel like a Disney Channel original movie that someone passed on and then someone else was like, hey, what if we stretch this out like really far? For what it is, it's fine. You know, I like, guess totally fine. I get it. Like, I'm not the target demographic, obviously, but it's like, I get what they're going for. You know, I mean, there's a lot of musical numbers that go on for way too long. They're really padding this uh, series out to make it as long as I can. But, you know, it's all right. It's an all right show. I get it. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss any videos from me. Let me know what uh, movies or TV shows you think I should do next. Email me at uh, alexmyerscontact at gmail.com. Um, it's the uh, fan mail account. It's also in the about section of my uh, YouTube page. I have a game on the App Store. It's kind of like Candy Crush, kind of like Bejeweled, whatever, but it just has all my little characters on it. It's free to download. So just, you know, download it. Links are in the description. I have a podcast out. It's all about dating advice, dating stories, uh, you know, just taking emails from all of you guys and then just giving my thoughts and my advice and what you should or shouldn't do or whatever. So link is down below. Check that out. And above all, else, everybody have a great day and I'll see you all next time.